Hi, thanks for tuning in today. You're about to see a worship service that I hope will be a blessing to you. If you would like to help support the ministries of the Visalia Methodist Church, you can click on the comment link below and that will take you to a, a giving tab. We hope that the worship service you're about to see and the sermon you're about to hear will be a blessing to you. God bless and thanks. Good morning. Welcome to the Methodist Church. We are so glad that you have chosen to worship with us this morning. If this is your first time visiting us, either here in person or online, we would appreciate a chance to get to know you. If you would just text the word VISIT to 559-657-6848 and be sure to fill out the digital connection card. We would appreciate that and welcome. If this is not your first time, then please text the word HERE to that same number, 559-657-6848, or leave a comment on Facebook. And now is a good time to silence your phone for those who are here in the sanctuary. For those who watch our replays on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to turn on your notifications so that you never miss a new posting. Children of all ages are always welcome in worship. Kiddos ages three years through sixth grade who would like to attend Sunday school during the sermon time can meet Miss Jackie near the main doors after the first praise song. For those with children four and under, our nursery is always open and available for your convenience. If you need directions, please ask an usher. Camp Willamaki Youth Summer Musical grades one through eight begins tomorrow. It's not too late to volunteer. If you can't be there during the rehearsal hours from 9 to 11.30, you can still help by helping with snack donations. We can still use some small bottled waters, individual packages of goldfish crackers and cookies. You can drop your donations off at the church office or in the kitchen on Sunday. Remember, this is a two-week program, so we will need snacks for 10 days. We appreciate your help. Yes, Stephanie. So Stephanie says we still have a few spots that if someone did not get to a chance to register yet, if they will contact Stephanie today, you can go on the website, visceliamethodist.org, or just show up in the morning. We have a few spots, so we invite you to join us if you did not get registered yet. All of our programs rely on volunteers. We are still looking for additional team members for the Worship Arts Tech Team, our Hospitality Team, Camp Willamaki, and Awana Club. Sign-up sheets are located in the lobby, or you can see me after the service. Due to unforeseen circumstances, the Ad Council meeting that was scheduled for today has been rescheduled to next Sunday, July 24th, between services. We will meet in the Family Life Center. All are invited to attend. This is your opportunity to find out about the business and ministry of the church ask questions of staff and committee leaders, and share your voice and vote on matters of the church. Again, that has been rescheduled to Sunday, July 24th, between services. Mark your calendars and plan to help us celebrate Pastor Don and Donita's 50th wedding anniversary on Sunday, August 7th, here at 6 p.m. This will be a potluck celebration, so bring your favorite dish to share and help us celebrate Pastor Don and Donita. The flowers on the altar this morning are given by Sharon Rico in memory of her beloved husband, Manuel. Thank you, Sharon. And don't forget that one of the best ways to tell someone you care about them is to invite them to join you in worship next week. And now if you will bow your heads and join me in a prayer. Dearest Lord Jesus, you call us to serve in many ways. Let us answer your call and be willing to meet the needs of others through our ministries and outreaches. We have much to thank you for. Let us not forget the various blessings we enjoy. 
Hear and accept our thanks and praise as we worship together today. We pray for those who volunteer their time and money to support the various classes, programs, and partner ministries. Grant them wisdom and understanding, love and compassion as they answer your call to serve. Use them as witnesses of your grace as they interact with those they serve. We pray for our neighborhoods where we live and the places we work and serve, for the people that we have contact with every day. May the Spirit of Christ be seen in us as we love our community. We pray for our church leaders, committees, and staff, asking for your spirit to guide and direct the decisions and plans that are made. Help us be the kind of church that you want us to be. We pray for our pastors as they bring the message to us this morning. We pray for open hearts and minds as we hear your word for us through them. We bring our prayers to you through your Son, praying as Jesus taught his disciples, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now, if you will stand as you are able, I will be reading from Psalm 34, verses 1 through 3. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. Let the humble hear and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. May the Lord add blessing to the reading of his word and the worship of his people. And now if you will join your voices with Alejandra and the band, let's continue praising God together. Good morning, everyone. How are you all doing today? Praise God. It says in Psalms 148.5, Let every created thing give praise to the Lord. For he issued his command, and they came into being. That is the power of our mighty God. Amen. Amen. So let's sing praises to God. Let's just sing it out and with joyful hearts and just have a good time. Amen.
Hi, Pastor Steve here. Welcome to worship today. Uh, I'm sorry that I can't be there to join you. Marilyn and I both came down with COVID this week. <clears throat> and um, to be honest, it's quite a bit more severe as a, a cold than I had uh, ever thought that it, it would be. So I, I hope that you're safe and I hope that you're feeling well wherever you are watching this message from. To those out on Facebook, hi. And to those in the sanctuary this morning, uh, good morning and God bless you. <clears throat> We're going to be looking at the book of James or the letter of James to the early church over the next several weeks. And today I'm going to give just a, a short introduction since I can't be there uh, with, with you live. I'm recording it in the office. This is uh, I'm recording Saturday mornings so that <clears throat> you can get the, the words without the germs um, uh, for, for this week. I expect to, to uh, make recovery and, and be back with you uh, again next week. So um, let me give you a little background on the letter of James, just some of the construct that we're going to, to assume uh, to understand <coughs> what he writes about. So James is considered uh, by most uh, biblical scholars to be the brother of Jesus. And he is also the head of the church, the, the, the earth, what, what we call the church, the Christian movement in Jerusalem, which was the most prominent position of its day. And, and he writes... Uh, quite a ways down the the road from the events described in the gospel. So this writing took place 62 to 66, somewhere in, in that uh, time frame, A.D. And it, the writing was precipitated, likely, by the catastrophic events that were just then beginning to um, overwhelm the everyday life of uh, Christians and Jews in Israel and Jerusalem and, and uh, residual effects in the rest of the world. Now, <clears throat> James considered himself to be a Jewish Christian. In other words, he considered Christianity to, to be a part of Judaism uh, um, in a, a way that differs slightly from uh, what Paul, the conclusion Paul came to, and, and certainly stopped short of what <coughs> transpired in Peter's life. So, uh, James is writing from a very Jewish perspective uh, to Christians, but he's writing to Christians that are in um, uh, a world where uh, big trouble is on the horizon and, and pretty much everybody can see it coming. I'll remind you historically of, of what is coming. So there were lots of groups in Israel <clears throat> at that time and in the time of Jesus that agitated for uh, revolt against Rome. There were the Essenes, there were the, the Pharisees, there were the Zealots, all different sects of uh, Judaism, and, and all advocating a, a violent uprising and the throwing off of Roman power. <clears throat> they were what we would call religious fanatics, right, in their worldview. But we have to remember that in that uh, time and place, there was no difference between government and religion. They were always and everywhere the same, same thing. So, they were pressing, there were many revolts and the plots and plans of revolts, and they were operating in ways that disrupted the flow of goods and the flow of money back and forth from Israel to Rome. So they were in the midst of catching Rome's attention. It was a hard time. And even the, the Christians and the Jews who were a part of the diaspora, who lived uh, apart and away from um, the nation of Israel, <clears throat> because of their faith tradition, they were also in circumstances where it was iffy, right? The, the, the Romans could make the decision to, to run up Jews everywhere and kill them. In fact, several times in their history, they, they would go on to, to do that. <clears throat> so James is writing into a, a situation uh, both in Israel and, and to the diaspora, in, in which he is addressing Christians who are suffering massively 
um, because of their faith, uh, lack of loss of job, uh, sometimes the threatened loss of life. The stakes are very real for the, the people that, that he's writing to. And the, the letter has tremendous um, import in its time. And of course, it still does in uh, our time. So let, let me read the first part of it to you. It says, James, a servant of God of the Lord Jesus Christ to the 12 tribes in the dispersion. That's a really beautiful way to start. Uh, it's a, a compliment and a praise to the people that he's writing to. If you were to modernize that, when Christian leaders write to, to people who they have um, a high opinion of, they write to the saints, to the saints of the Methodist Church in Visalia would be a, a way to say the, the same thing. So um, he wants them to know that he considers the sufferings and the deprivations that they're enduring now as things heat up towards total revolt and, and war with, with Rome. He wants them to know that those sufferings are acknowledged and that it puts them uh, in an historical light as equal to the, the Jews um, who went to, to Babylon and to other dispersions of, of Jews outside of Israel. And that's pretty good company to be keeping from the Jewish faith tradition. He then gets right to the point, right? This is a man of a few words. I, uh, I really like that uh, about James. Um, in verse two, he says, count it all joy, brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness and let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete and lacking in nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, <clears throat> and it will be given him. <clears throat> but let him ask in faith with no doubting. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. That person must not suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man and unstable in all his ways. And that ends the scripture that we're going to uh, talk about today. So count it all joy, brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. That's a, a pretty sobering word to people who are in, in the midst of significant trials in their life. And, and historically, uh, again, uh, that word went out and we think likely sustained some communities of, of faith outside of, of Israel uh, uh, in light of the events that, that would follow the time in this letter. So he writes a letter in a time uh, of increasing agitation. And in 70 AD, uh, Rome sent several legions to Israel and, and they destroyed the nation, right? Every, every village and hamlet uh, that was a part of the nation. And they literally tore Jerusalem down. They, they burned what um, they could and, and they dismantled the temple, which was made of uh, primarily of stone. <clears throat> it, um, so their answer to, to the revolt was a, a, a complete uh, quashing uh, of Israel as an entity and as a, a place and the overthrow of the temple authority and the government of Israel, complete and, and total. So by 74 AD, which is uh, when the matters finally came to an end, um, there was nothing left. And by 80 AD, um, work had already begun on a Roman temple on the site of the Jewish, former Jewish temple, and a Roman town was in place, and it would go on to become a, a, um, a, a decent crossroads uh, city. The only thing the Romans left standing at, in those times of trials were uh, some of um, uh, Pilate and Herod's uh, houses and, and um, uh, residences, those those kind of things. Every, everything else was, was leveled. So it's a it's a real situation that, that uh, James writes into, and, and his message is pretty firm and clear. Right? Look, um, even though you're suffering, you you take heart in that in, in your suffering. Right? That there is joy to be found in, in suffering, and, and you hold the line and, and stay true to to your faith. <clears throat> I think that. In our church, and in, in, in my life because of my age and, and because our, our church is a mature church, we understand these things maybe um, with a, a different level than some younger folks might. But I, I'll just use my time today to, re to remind you how true this is, right? So when we suffer in life, in, in whatever way, whether it's persecution for our faith, which is amping up, right? It, uh, it's harder and harder to be a biblical uh, Christian, or, or whether it's just the, the duress of, of life, which is meant for all of us uh, to eventually come to an end. Um, the sufferings that we go through, they form and shape who we are. If we go into them with an expectation that God will see us through, even if we don't get out of the situation what we want, 
but we believe that, that God will see us through and, and that God will not waste the pain that, that the wisdom that's created, the, the, um, the closeness to God that, that comes from clinging to God during the difficulties. It, if that's how we face our trials, then even though life is very hard and sometimes ends uh, unfairly, we can join James in, in saying, you know, I, I, I was bold in my faith and, and I did hold on and I am in many ways closer to God and more clear about the meaning and the purpose of life than I would have been without suffering. That's a, a, a great contrast to the uh, viewpoints of a lot of people in the world today. Um, I, I hate to sound like a, a cranky old, old man, but uh, we live in a, a time when um, everybody wants to be a victim more than they want to be someone who overcomes uh, victimization. Uh, so in our society today, it, we're in the odd situation of having biblical Christianity considered to be evil and oppressive and, and um, uh, a victimizer of, of uh, people because of views on sexuality and, and uh, uh, other subjects. And so it's the first time in my lifetime, first time in, in modern history, that uh, biblical Christianity as, as a faith tradition comes anywhere close to the situation that we find in the New Testament in James, which is um, on the faith level, we're hard pressed uh, occasionally to, to um, uh, stay faithful and stick to our guns. And please remember that, that sticking to our guns and, and staying faithful means more than, than angrily denouncing those who speak against biblical Christianity. It means going the second mile and, and turning the other cheek and, and uh, holding on to our faith graciously and lovingly and, and in concert with the way Jesus asked us to, to live and to react to those who, who might attack us. That's good advice for the way that we handle the, the kind of the shots over the bow for modern Christianity or, or, or for Christianity that's biblical. It, it also, of course, applies to our, our lives. As we go through trial and, and difficulties and losses and setbacks of, of all kinds, if we can keep our heads, if we can stay calm, if we can stay loving, if we can have a, a broader view based on, on the truth of resurrection and, and uh, the promises of, of Christ, we're just way uh, ahead uh, of uh, everyone else because it is, in fact, possible to find sanity and to find peace uh, and serenity even in the, the midst of really, really difficult trials. <clears throat> the message of Christianity always goes through the cross. In modern forms of Christianity, people dump it down to the gospel of prosperity and, and to a faith tradition in which God will just do what you tell God to do if, if you pray the, the right way. But those things are, are not biblical and, and they are not the historical record. James says to people who are in great duress and who are suffering for their faith, you hold fast, God will reward it. And he would say the same thing now, I think. And he would say that because, again, Christianity comes through the cross. You can't have resurrection. You can't have new life. You can't have a, a brand new way to understand things unless you die to the old ways. And that means that you're going to have things that happen in this life that you don't like. Being picked on by people who don't know much about Christianity, that's one part of it. Going through physical duress and, and the slow uh, dissolution of the functioning of our physical bodies. Watching people that we love go through difficult times economically or health-wise or whatever it, it might be. We're all going to suffer in this life. In Christianity, right, in, in, instead of feeling like every time there's suffering, uh, somebody has to be made to, to pay. In Christianity, we're given the freedom to, to understand, look, uh, it may not be right, and, and it sure is hard, and we don't want it, but if it's here, we believe that God will walk with us through it and that we'll come out the other side of it with a uh, refreshed viewpoint and, and a heart refreshed by being closer to God, closer to God because we just cling to God during times when we have to reckon with the fact that we're not in control. So, that's the way James starts this letter. Right? That's a pretty intense start to, to tell people who are in really difficult times, you stick to your faith, right? Um, God will make something out of that. Don't, don't you give up and don't be weak-minded. Don't be flopping back and forth between I, I think God is, is present in this to I can't see where God is present, so I'm going to become a, a pagan or, or worship some other way. He, he's pretty clear-minded about th this is the way that it goes. You will be brought to resurrection. 
in every death that happens in your, your life, right? In, in everything that goes hard against you that you don't want, that makes the world seem like the powers of this world uh, are winning. The promise for Christians is there's resurrection on the other side. And resurrection didn't mean that Jesus came back and, and changed the, the ways of this fallen world. It meant that he rose to a new life. And, and that's what James is promising. There's a new life for, for all of us. So in, in whatever you might be enduring right now, whether it is based, again, on the economy, which is really scary right now, or whether it's based on troubles in your family for your being a, a biblical Christian in a time that that's unpopular, or whether it be health-related or, or other types of, of uh, difficulties that, that you're facing, I, I would reiterate what James says, right? You, you hang in there. Our God is a good God, really, a good and a powerful God. And, and whatever besets you, whatever difficulties, even if they don't go the way that you want them, what you're going to find is, is that God's presence is increased in your life and your peace and genuine ability to have joy. They're in, increased every time the cross gives way to the resurrection. And that has to happen for faithful Christians when uh, things are, are hard pressed. So turn to the center of our faith, remember the, the cross, and remember that beyond the cross lies the empty tomb and, and the resurrection. Believe that's coming in your life. Believe that, that God has done it and will do it uh, again and again and again, and that each difficulty that, that you face will result in your being closer to God, wiser and freer in the constraints of, of this world. That's a good place to start. Uh, uh, again, uh, I am sorry not to be able to be there with you, but I just think the, the responsible thing to do is, is to stay away. I'm still in uh, quarantine, so it wouldn't have made any sense for, for me to have uh, showed up and, and be in worship and put you at jeopardy. Um, <clears throat> quarantine should be over by next Sunday, so I'll look forward to being in, in worship with you. It is a privilege in my life to pastor this church and to, to be a part of all of your lives, and I hope that God uh, has blessed you in and through our worship today. I'm sure Alejandra has done amazing um, music, and um, I hope that as we finish up the service now with the final songs, that you give yourself over to, to uh, truly being in the presence of God and in, in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Let God minister to you and give you faith and, and encouragement. All right, God bless, uh, gang and I'll see you next week. Thanks. Let's all rise, please. Thank you.
I'll be reading scriptures from Job 11, 13, 16, and 18. If only you would prepare your heart and lift up your hands to him in prayer, you will forget your misery. It will be like water flowing away. Having hope will give you courage. You will be protected and will rest in safety. And in Joshua 1, 9, it says, this is my command, says the Lord. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged. For the Lord, your God, is with you wherever you go. So the song that we will sing now is called Take Courage. begun so take courage take courage my heart stay steadfast my soul he's in the waiting oh he's in the waiting and hold on to your hope as your triumph unfolds he's never failing he's never failing so take courage Stay steadfast, my soul. He's in the waiting. Oh, he's in the waiting. And hold on to your hope as your triumph unfolds. He's never failing. He's never failing. And you who hold the stars, who call them each by name will surely keep your promise to me that I will rise in your victory oh you oh you who hold the stars who call them each by name Stay 
Thank you, Alejandra. That was beautiful. And now, before you go, remember that as you go here, you may go in confidence, knowing the love of God the Father, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the presence of the Holy Spirit goes with you. Amen. Thank you for being here today. God bless you all.